A former Fortune 500 CEO turned relationship strategist and the author of Ring Exchange, Adventures of a Multiple Marrier, Pam Evans, just took the fifth, husband that is, now, as she calls herself, a reformed multiple marrier, Pam is with us to help single, married, and divorced viewers avoid the common relationship mistakes. Welcome, Pam. Thank you. It's great to be here. I'm glad because it's great to have you. However, I have so many questions going around in my head. Five marriages. At the third, or maybe even the second, or maybe even the fourth, weren't you concerned about entering into matrimony yet again? No, actually, I didn't get concerned until I got into a relationship with a wonderful man and I couldn't tell him that I had had four marriages and four divorces before my 50th birthday. And that's this relationship that's that you're this currently relationship. in. So currently. how did he find out, Pam? Well, right off the bat, I told him about the first two marriages. That was safe. That was safe. <laughs> and then, you know, I thought, men don't have the memory of an elephant. He won't <laughs> put two and two together. But ultimately, the third one leaked out as we were getting more serious in the relationship. And then I stopped because I don't want to mess up a good thing. I just couldn't go any further and tell him about the fourth. And I thought, well, I'm sort of lying by omission because the first marriage was kind of annulled in the church. And so I thought, well, it's not really a marriage. So how did you tell him? Or did he find out in the book? He actually found out. He was the one who encouraged me to write this book, only knowing about the three marriages and three divorces. <laughs> he said, you know, I think this would be healing for you. You'll learn a lot about yourself. And you can help a lot of other people, too. And he didn't even know about the fourth marriage. So it was just as the book was being released, and I needed him to <laughs> look at it objectively. So I went off to work one day, let him read the whole book, came home, and he said, did you tell me you were Pamela Anderson? <laughs> and I said, um, I, for, I think I might have. He said, I don't think we discussed this. And we both started laughing. And he said, you know, I know you. We've been together many years, and I understand why you hid this. You were afraid I was going to bolt from the relationship. And I said, well, would you have done that? And he said, well, no, but I would have been very, very cautious because four sounds like way too many marriages to me. And I said, well, it did to me too, and that's why I didn't tell you. So what makes this marriage different? Because you've been through so many marriages, right? And we'll talk a little bit about what you've learned from each of them, but why, why, why is this one going to work in your mind? This one's going to work because I've taken eight and a half, almost nine years to practice some lessons learned from the first four marriages. So you didn't just jump into them? No, I didn't. And our relationship was built on a friendship first. Rather than all of the physical attributes, we developed a friendship first and we worked together on our relationship. And it was when I realized I wanted to change. I knew that I was the one bringing myself into each of these marriages and I didn't have much self-awareness, I didn't have much knowledge about relationships, and I just kept doing the same old thing over and over. So often when people go into multiple marriages or relationships, it sounds like they're picking the same partners and making the same mistakes, right? But you learn to kind of look inward, be a little bit self-reflective, which I think is important in, in every relationship. And, and you also said something that I think is really very essential, and that is oftentimes the physicality, the sexual attraction, the, the hormones that get in the way of really developing a friendship. Did, what did you have in the other four? Well, in the other relationships, I actually picked different partners. They looked different. They came from different cultural backgrounds. They even had different levels of educations and professions. Uh, but what they had in common was three of the four were very, very controlling, and I always set myself up in a subservient role, thinking that if I live vicariously through them and I made them happy, that happiness would be returned to me. So how did you shift that? How did you finally decide no more subservience, I'm going to take charge, and I'm going to choose somebody that respects that? That actually happened with this 
marriage that I'm in today, I really got the self-awareness. I really determined that I needed to look within myself. I needed to learn to set boundaries. I needed to assert myself so my expectations could be met. And it was actually my partner, my husband today, who said, you know, Pam, you need to quit living vicariously through me. You're giving 101% of yourself to this relationship. And as much as I love you, I can't return that much back to you. You need to go out, find some hobbies and interests, and do some things that make you who you are. You know, he's very special, Pam, because not every man would say that. A lot of men would think, wow, this is wonderful. I love all this appreciation and all this wonderful attention that she's bestowing on me, right? Right. So what's one of the secrets in the book for, for anybody married, single, looking for a relationship? that we can share with our audience. I think one of the secrets is to always look back before you rush ahead. If you're ending a relationship and you want to find that next best partner, it's really important to analyze the situation you just left. Look at the pros and cons. Look at the red flags you might have missed. Look at yourself. What did you do to contribute to the build up of the relationship and the demise of it. I think that's really, really important. I think that's really important and a great point. I also think that just don't jump into something like you said earlier. Take your time. Like for this fifth marriage, you said you've you waited several years before you actually pursued it again. So take that time, like you say, for reflection. That's right. And the other thing to do is to strategize your life. With or without a partner, it's so important to know who you are and to envision the kind of life you want. That way you can attract the right partner who will bring joy and happiness into the life that you want to plan for yourself. So many people don't strategize their lives. We have to do it at work. We do our goals and objectives so we can get that great annual performance review, but we really never have a life plan. You need one with flexibility built in, but you need a framework that you can work towards, and then you can find that next right partner. So you need a life plan and a relationship plan, and that's one of the ways that's in here. Thank you so much, Pam. Power Your Life will be right back. Ahead, find out what's hot for next week. Healthy living includes emotional wellness, or what I like to call emotional wealth. Emotional wealth is all about being in charge of your thoughts, your feelings, how we act, and often, unfortunately, how we react. One key to emotional wealth is appreciation. And I believe that appreciation is totally ongoing and a way to look at the world, our relationships, and even ourselves. It's about paying attention to all the wonders that life has to offer and seeing the beauty and the richness, even in the common everyday things. So take some time to find precious moments in nature and beauty in all its forms. It will lift up your spirits and bring a sense of ease to your mind. Thanks for being with us tonight. On our next show, Are Too Many Vitamins Bad For You? We'll find out and we'll expose the myths about the vitamin industry next week. Remember that you have the power to power your dreams and power your life.